whose passion is moving heavy items. Using this technique, he's moved everything from one-ton blocks to buildings. I've tried to do this without any mechanical machinery at all. I've used uh, mostly sticks and uh, stones for my equipment. Here's a very fascinating question that this channel called History Drops brings up. And it's called, how did they build the Great Pyramid? And I would love to know because this is something that I have never found out. And that's why people are like, what if Nephilim building it? What if there was this? What if there was that? So how in the world did they build the pyramid? Let's check this out. This video already looks crazy cool. How did they build the Great Pyramid? Like, like what? This like, is what? your question. I've, 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 I've heard the, the one that I heard recently that I just watched a video on was the ramp theory, the internal ramp theory. You yeah, guys the, are the obviously ramp familiar. that goes around. Yeah. 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 So that that one kind of made some sense to me but what what do you guys think who the hell knows well i mean it's it I, a big part of it depends on what what equipment do you have to begin with you know my dad was in uh in construction for a long time in commercial construction so he was building high rises you know huge like uh ups warehouses stuff like that so he's all the steel erection and concrete so he's very familiar with you know lifting very heavy beams way up high to put it on the 20th floor and weld it in and bolt it in or whatever. Uh, you know, and we talked about this in the... Isn't there a lot of tunnels within the pyramids? So that 3D model didn't make any sense to me. Tim, like, you know, how do you do this? You know, and he said, well, first of all, no crane in the world can boom out that far. Like when once you get the levels up high, you're not going to be able to boom. It, the the center of the pyramid's way out there because you got, the base of your crane's got to be on the ground. And you're not going to put a two ton block on there and boom it way. It's going to, you know, it's going to fail. So, but we do, we, oh, in modern wow. times, we tend to like, you have the job and if you have unlimited funding, you know, which happens sometimes basically like you need to build this dam. It's in a very difficult place to work because it's in all these cliffs or whatever. You basically have to build the machinery you need to build, to make that particular structure. And that's it. Yeah. Then you dismantle everything when you're done. Right. So the tools are one time use. Uh, no way. Yeah, that's how it's fascinating. They're really putting up amazing content here to give us examples. I never heard of this channel before. Check them out. Go subscribe. But if you're so I think a lot of the ramp stuff and we do see this at Karnak when you first walk in, you're looking at dynastic like New Kingdom work and you see remnants of mud brick ramps that are still up against the uh, the pylons. Sandstone pylons. The sandstone pylons, because that's how they got those sandstone blocks up there and that the ramps have never been fully dismantled, right? Mm. Um, so on, I on think- On the outside. It's it's on the inside of the temple. Yeah, I can yeah. show you yeah. a picture okay. of yeah. it. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll yeah. keep talking, I'll look it up. But it, so it's like, the, the, I think, you know, when you're asking how, like a lot of people are trying to figure out how do you build this structure with the lowest level of technology possible, right? Um, so yeah, once you start talking about building giant ramps, either a long straight one or a, a one that circles around, um, this is about using manpower to drag blocks up high, you know, and, but if you have tools, you don't need ramps, you know? So the question is how in the world do they move these though? Because these blocks are very large very heavy according to this the giant blocks the heavyweights weight 25 to 80 tons 50 000 to 160 000 pounds wow the core blocks these are millions of rough hewn limestone blocks that make up bulk of the pyramids weight two to three tons on average still like how did they move it i just don't know i i tend to think like yeah i, don't, I mean you, it's a significant log logistical challenge. I mean, so the individual blocks in the Great Pyramid, on the outside at least, the superstructure, you're talking, you know, even some of the big casing stones, three, four, five tons maximum yeah. kind of deal. Yeah. But the inside, like the granite structures on the inside, there is 2,500 tons of granite that's been put into the central granite structure in the Great Pyramid. Yeah. And it's made up of 70 to 80 ton granite beams yeah, that's crazy. that are in the center of the pyramid and, and they're like 150 feet off the ground level yeah like that's that's insane and some right? of them like the beams that go across the ceiling you're not getting those around the corners of any ramp that goes yeah they, they're, they're too long you're not gonna <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah, the ceiling beams are massive like yeah. it's the huge they span the, the 
you know, the width of the chamber. Mm -hmm. um, and there's stacks of them. I mean, there's like seven chambers. Yeah, there's, so. seven, there's a bunch so of sets. If it was flat, if so if they had built like, like the first 20 layers or whatever of it, and so you're looking at a, like the, the base of a pyramid that's totally flat, and you've got like, you've got the first 20 levels of blocks or whatever, and you've yeah. got this internal ramp that we can't see today because it's on the inside of the pyramid and we just haven't found it yet. That's, as they're building it, they're building the this ramp. Yeah. As, yeah. as they're building it, they're building the ramp on the inside of it. And so it'll just pop up out of the latest level that you have. And that's where they're bringing the stones up. They're kind of dragging the stones up. And then at the corner, they've got something to turn them. And then it goes up to the, yeah. to the, to the next level. Mm. And the, the thing on this theory was that the, the grand gallery was used only to to lift those massive those seventy massive granite blocks up that you're talking about. There was I've, a they were they were lifted up through the grand gallery and then placed above the sarcophagus. Of the I've, I've heard that theory and it's it's an interesting one. I mean there is a there's a lot to the grand gallery that suggests it was functional. Right, one of the mysterious parts about it is the notches. You know, as you go up, it's like these notch things. So you do look at it and think, okay, was there something moving up and down this? Uh, I don't know that that explains why it's corbelled. If you're just using it as a pulley system, I don't know that you need to corbel it. Uh, I think there's other explanations for those notches, like Chris Dunn talks about these potentially being the holders for frameworks to hold Heimholtz resonators. Uh, it's an interesting theory. Even if you're using it to pull those blocks up to that level, you still then have to lift those those 80 ton beams up way above the grand gallery because that structure extends far. I mean. The king's chamber starts at the top of the grand's gallery, and it, it goes way up from there. So you still, you still got a logistical challenge of like lifting them up much, much further. Wow! Didn't someone prove that you could easily move those massive bricks just based off of science and physics? Maybe I'll look that up. You know, like I said, even just in the king's chamber, what is it like fifteen feet tall or what? Even yeah. more. You've got beams there, but then you've got sort of six more chambers above it that all have beams of similar sizes mm -hmm. making them up. I do think that that was, pr I mean, like I don't know how they built it, but I feel like that was probably, yeah, they were building it up from the base and they probably had to have a platform. They probably built that structure up to the top and then they built, they must have built the rest of it around it. Uh, in fact, that's, you know, it's one of the reasons why this idea that it's some, they often call it a, re, you know, relieving chambers is the term they give to those chambers above the king's chamber. And it, it actually is nonsense because at the very top of the king's chamber, uh, there's two big uh, chevron shaped limestone uh, blocks in the ceiling. And those don't actually rest on that granite structure at all. They rest mm. on the surrounding masonry, the limestone that's packed in around the king's chamber. So in effect, you've, you actually got a granite structure that is freestanding inside the pyramid. Like yeah. the, the weight of the pyramid is not pressing on that on that mm. on that structure at all. It's mm -hmm. it's actually held up, and the void that space is 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 supported by the surrounding masonry. So yeah, the chevrons distribute the weight above the king's chamber off to the masonry on the sides. Okay, yeah, not yeah. onto the the king's chamber. Yeah. So there'll probably be some pressure this way. Yeah. Uh, but you you know this is an interesting idea to me because it's like well they needed that thing to be free because maybe it was there was some resonance or it's vibrating yeah, they wanted it to doing ring. something yeah wanted it to ring <laughs> uh, I don't know but um, yeah it's a, like I, I haven't I mean there's lots of theories it's I, it's interesting too because you know they thought they were relieving chambers because they're like oh, okay they're trying to this is to get like distribute the weight off the top of this flat ceiling of the top of the king's chamber but now we know that's not the case so what are they for Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So now you're like, okay, so it isn't for relieving the weight, and yet we still have this this strange looking stack on top of the king's chamber, right. all made out of granite, which would have been incredibly difficult because it's beams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know that have to go all the way wow. down this enormous chamber, and then you had another set, all a bunch of beams, and another set, a bunch of beams, another set, a bunch of beams. Yeah. Like, and the, why? Yeah. Would it's you not, do it that it's way? It's not really a relieving chamber. It's no. not. Might not really be a king's chamber. Yeah. It might oh, not really a be a chamber. queen's chamber. Yeah. I mean, they're just right. all misnomers. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. I, no I, king or queen. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Or relieving. Right. Have been found. <laughs> right. No, no relieving kings or queens. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I used to call it like upper chamber, lower chamber, subterranean. But it's like people know it as the king's. People know it. And then I got tired of saying the so-called king's yeah, chamber yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, whatever right. it's, we call it the king's chamber yeah. but uh yeah and it's interesting too those chambers above it i mean you know the the, the ceiling like so we're in those i've never been up there I, i'd love to i know they, they're up there uh, at the moment actually they're doing stuff like they've been doing stuff they're looking for that void 
Yeah, they had a, mm-hmm. a, a mm-hmm. set of mm-hmm. s- several ladders duct taped together, <laughs> yeah. laying on the side of the Grand Calvary. Yeah, they were, they were on the like. Can we? Uh, can, we <laughs> can we get that? Stand that up and go up there? And no, 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 you can't. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, the last couple of years, I've seen like a power cord running up. Yeah, because the, the access to those areas is through the top left corner of the Grand Gallery, okay. way up in the air. It'd be sketchy. I mean, it would be frightening to crawl up there and get into that hole. Yeah, the top, yeah. the very top of the top of the Grand Gallery. There's a a hole. Off to the left. Left, top right? left, yeah. Yeah, and that goes into the, just above the ceiling of the king's chamber. So has there, has the pyramids completely been explored, like, or are there still some unknowns about the pyramids that we have no idea about, that they've never been explored? Like, what if there's just, like, some hidden treasure, not treasure, but something hidden, bones or some mummy, something to prove what exactly is going on in the these pyramids. A man from Michigan has discovered how to move and lift 20 plus ton blocks by hand using only wood, pebbles, counterweight, and manpower. He creates a compelling argument for the method. 4,000 years ago, Stone Age Britons raised this mysterious monument, Stonehenge. Nobody knows how they did it, how they moved and stood these massive stones. It's a scientific mystery. This man swears he's cracked. He's building his own stone henge in his Flint, Michigan backyard to prove it. Wally Wallington's not a scientist, but he knows a thing or two about moving rocks. That's a 300 pound block. Oh, wow. This is a 1,600 pound block, not too difficult. He's a retired construction worker whose passion is moving heavy items. <laughs> His feats always draw a crowd, mostly family. I thought he was crazy. Who cares about moving blocks around? But then when you look at the, the magnitude of the weights that he's moving around, it is, it is really impressive. Wow. He's not using any equipment or anything. In playing with blocks, Wally thinks he's discovered how Stonehenge was moved. This is my first Stonehenge arch I permanently put in place. Uh, it's three blocks, they weigh over a ton each. It's all based on a very simple technique. I found a simple explanation for this, uh, to move a block about the weight of a minivan, would be to place a stone underneath it. And once I balance on it, I can spin it. Of course, with that spin, you've seen I didn't go anywhere. But I got two handles on my lever, and I could place another stone on this side. Now, every time I spin a half rotation on each stone, I move the block horizontally the distance between the stones. With my own output, I could move a uh, one-ton block 300 feet per hour. Using this technique, he's moved everything from one-ton blocks to buildings. He moved up to a pole barn at one point, a 30 by 40 pole barn, then he moved 300 feet for me, and it was more or less, you know, what else can we move? And he looked at me and says, hey, can we move your barn? And I said, sure, let's, you know. <laughs> Next thing you know, it was 300 feet in the other direction onto another piece of property. It can move barns. And while he's betting, it moves Stonehenge's 25-ton rocks. But raising these giants is a whole different puzzle. Right. This is 19,200 pounds. Yeah, it's 128 square feet of, uh, cubic feet of concrete. Today, Wally hopes to solve it. He'll put one of his theories to the test and try to stand this 19,200-pound block by himself. I've tried to do this without any mechanical machinery at all. I've used uh, mostly sticks and uh, stones for my equipment. Uh, No pulleys, no hoist, no uh, metal levers. Uh, Just try to use gravity, too, I believe is my favorite tool. The first goal is getting this block three feet off the ground. In order to move it up to this point, I just rock the block back and forth, adding weight to that end, and that opens a gap on this side, and uh, just slide a board in. Then How did he... So he just kept on doing that until he got the block up, then? I add the weight to that end. There he goes. And slide a board in on this end. Uh... This shoring box acts like a jack, slowly raising the block. It's three feet off the ground, but tomorrow is the big experiment. This is wild. But wouldn't that take years to do a pyramid then like that? But if you have like thousands of people. Standing it up, the grandkids have taken the day off school and the cameras are rolling. Hey, you guys watch Papa, he's gonna do something wild. They're here to watch Granddad lift a block 
the weight of two bulldozers. It's ready. Yes, it is. Here's how it's supposed to work. The first thing I'm going to do here is release this temporary shoring I have set and come over here, release some of my counterweights, and that's going to put the entire weight of the block on this rope. So then I'm going to release the rope, come back in, and the rope's going to be my brake. I'm going to guide it into the pit. The easiest way I can explain this is the, this is just a big teeter-totter, and i got the big kid on that end, and he's going to go down, and this end's going up. He believes in his technique, but he's had some setbacks in the past. One day I got thrown over top of a block, and a couple times I had the blocks roll off the top and almost land on my feet. One time I knocked myself out cold on the concrete. Dang. And so it's, uh, it's been challenging. Okay. Are you ready? Yes! All right. I'll just start spraying the sand. The sand will wash out and the block will start coming down. Once the sand is washed from the pit, the block's own weight slowly stands it up. No way. Okay, finally, she's between the lines, guys. Looks good. What? He did it. Well, there you have it. It's possible to make something that big move. I, oh, that albeit he moved things very, very slow but it's possible using physics something i don't know very much about but that's crazy anyway guys i'd love to know what you guys think in the description below whatever that might be have an amazing day and god bless